Hello students of Grade 7, welcome back. On today's video, we will learn another new topic of history and the topic name is New Kings and Kingdoms. In this lesson, there are three topics that you have to know and those are Rise of Regional Kingdoms and under this topic, there is another three subtopics that are Palas, Rujara Padiharas and Rashtrakutas. Second is Tributite Struggle and its Decline kingdoms beyond kinetic plans. So these are the three topics that we will learn today. Now, during 700 CE and 1200 CE centuries, three powerful kingdoms emerged in the Indian subcontinent and those are Palas, Gujarabatiharas and Rashtrakutas. Now we will see one by one who were the rulers and founders of these three kingdoms. Now when we first go to the Palas, the Palas dynasty was founded by King Kopala and according to the Tibetan Mom, it is believed that during the 8th century, the King Kopala was elected as a new ruler by the local leaders. Okay? Now, after this King Kopala, his son Karmapala okay, succeeded his father and during 8th century, he led a very successful campaign and conquered a place called Kanoj. Now, during the time of King Tharmapala, the famous University of Vikramashila was also been established. Now, after King Tharmapala, his son Devapala succeeded his father and he extended the kingdom of Pala dynasty till the border of Kamrupat and this Kamrupat is located in Asamti. So, he extended his border till up to that border, Kamrupat Assam and he also built a very famous temple known as Mahabodhi Temple at Bodhkaya. Okay, so these are some of the information significance of Pala dynasty. Now when we go to the Gujara Badiharas, this Gujara Badiharas is believed to be the origin, okay, they are believed to be the clans of or tribes of the Huns, okay, H U and Huns tribes, and this Hun tribes was believed to be the one of the most powerful kingdom of the Rajput clans. Now, one of the most very important king of this Gujarat Badiharas was Nagabada the first, okay, but the one of the greatest ruler among the Gujarat Badiharas was King Mir Boja, okay, who ruled from 836 CE to 886 CE. So these are some of the significance of this Gujarat Haras. And when we go to the next dynasty, that is Rashtrakutas, among these three regional kingdoms, that is Palas, Gujarat Pratiharas, and Rashtrakutas, this Rashtrakutas is believed to be one of the most powerful kingdoms according to the Arabic sources. And the founder of this dynasty is King Dandi Durga. Okay, and he is believed from he is believed to be from the clans of Jalukians. Now, the last ruler, the last ruler of this Rashtrakutas was King Kaka II, who was overthrown, who was defeated by the Jalukian king called Teapala. Okay, so these are some of the significant founder and the rulers of these three regional kingdoms. Now. When we go to the second topic that is tributite struggle and its decline, these three kingdoms, usual kingdoms, was always involved in wars, okay? Wars and struggle among these two. And tripartite means three means it's three. Okay, I repeat one again. Three means it's three. So three kingdoms, that is Palas, Gujarabadiharas and Mashtrakudas, three three kingdoms was always engaged in wars and struggles in order to capture a place called Kanoj. And this Kanoj was a place of a blessing. Okay. Whoever occupied or whoever dominated this place was is was going to dominate the entire country. So these three kingdoms was always engaged in wars to capture the place called Kanoj and this Kanoj was also a very fertile land. So that is the reason why these three kingdoms was always engaged in war. That is the reason it is called a tributite struggle. Okay, And among these three kingdoms also, the, uh, the dynasty of Rashtrakutas, which is considered to be the most important and powerful dynasty or kingdom among these two trees, this kingdom was the only one, that is Rashtrakutas was the only one that dominated this Kanoj for a long period of time because by the end of the 9th century, 
Kampalas and Pujrapadihara started to decline slowly, but the Rashtrakuta dynasty remained still and they dominated over the Kanoj for a very long time. But even the, this dynasty Rashtrakutas could not carry for a long time when in 1017 CE, okay, in 1017 CE, Mahmud of Ghazni defeated, when he defeated the last Patihar ruler, that is Nagabada II, okay, that was the end of the domination of power over Kanoj by the Rashtrakutas. I repeat, in 1017, okay, when Mahmud of Ghazni, who was from the Delhi Sultanate, when he defeated the last Patihara ruler, okay, when he defeated the last ruler, that is Nagabada II, that was the end of the domination of Kanoj by the Pratihar rulers. Now, how did it decline? Why did the three powerful kingdoms decline slowly? And how did the Trepidat struggle came to an end is that since the three powers, since the three kingdoms was always engaged in one in war, one after the another, they could not control the country as a whole. Okay, they were not able to, and all the revenue, resources, income, and country's will were invested in the war. And since all the money was invested in the war, the other kingdoms or the, the subjects or the people were left behind. Okay, there were no one to look after them, no leaders to guide them. So in that way, and these three kingdoms also, their military strength was so powerful. Not only that, when they were always engaged in war, the small, small kingdoms and provinces started to declare themselves as independent. Now, when they started to declare themselves as independent, that's how this struggle came to an end. And not only that, the Dribbidai struggle started to decline because of lack of money, that is, sources of income, and the small kingdoms and provinces started to declare themselves as independent. So that is the reason why this tributary struggle came to an end. Now, the next topic we will see is kingdoms beyond Kangetic plans. Apart from these three regional kingdoms, what are some of the new kingdoms that has emerged in, uh, towards the Kangetic plans are Nepal, Kamrupa, Kashmir, Utkala. Utkala is in Odisha and Shilaharas. Shilaharas is in Maharashtra. So these are some of the new kingdoms that was emerged in the Kangeti plans. I repeat once again, Nepal, Kamrupa, Kamrupa is in Assam, Kashmir, Utkala, Utkala is in Odisha and Shilaharas. Shilaharas is in Maharashtra. Now apart from this, one of the most important dynasty that emerged in the 9th and 10th century was the Rajput dynasties. Now Rajput dynasties were considered to be the most prominent dynasties during the 9th and 10th century and they themselves declared as Rajputras. Okay? They declared themselves as Rajputras which means princes. Okay? Which means princes. Now this Rajput dynasties, they also considered themselves as Shastriyas. They also considered themselves as a family from Shastriyas. And some of the very prominent names they considered themselves are okay, Surya Vanshi. That is, Surya Vanshi is from the solar family, Chandra Vanshi, which is from the lunar family, and Agni Gula. Agni Gula is from the fire family. So these are some of the prominent names, powerful names that was used by the Rajput people during their time. I repeat once again, Surya Vanshi, which is from the solar family, Chandra Vanshi, which is from the lunar family, and Agni Kola, which is from the fire family. So these are some of the prominent names that was used. Now, these Rajput dynasties, they were, since they were so powerful during the 9th and 10th century, they tried to compete and they tried to dominate India, okay? They tried to dominate India, but later on, it was also a failure when Aladdin of Kalji from the Delhi Sultanate, okay? When he overtook the two powerful Rajput forts, that is Chitor and Dantambor, okay? I repeat, Rajput dynasties, they tried to be, they tried to dominate all India, but their aims and their objectives was a failure when Aladdin culture of Sultan okay, took over what, two of the most powerful Rajput forts of Chitor and Rantampur and that's how the Rajput dynasty started to decline. Now, and that's how, okay, and that's how 
this whole Rajput dynasty came to an end. But some of the major important dynasty, Rajput dynasties that you and I we can remember is Johannes, Solankis, and Paramas. So these are the three powerful Rajput dynasties that can be remembered today. Now, today in this video, we have learned about the rise of regional kingdoms under which three of the most powerful kingdoms were Palas, Gujarat, and Niharas, and Rashtrakutas. We have also seen what is Trabidat struggle, between whom and why it was conducted, and how did it came to an end. And apart from these three regional kingdoms, what are the other small kingdoms that emerged in during the, uh, be, uh, beyond the Kanganic plans and how Rajput dynasties emerged and how did it end. Now students, I hope you have understood. If you have any problem regarding this, please feel free to WhatsApp me or call me. Till then, take care, stay safe and thank you.